Introducing RS30 Ultra. The first sim racing wheel and pedals designed by a professional championship racer. Officially licensed by Microsoft, RS30 brings next level realism to your racing sims. Sense the road, know your vehicle, and get faster lap times as you tear through the track. Dual helical gear motors give you more torque than traditional gear drive motors with the same smoothness and quietness of a belt drive motor. Experience a stunning 6 newton meters of torque, the most torque per dollar than any other wheel, and fast, accurate feedback with zero dead zones. Feel every nuance and know exactly when you're understeering, oversteering, or losing traction. Spring-loaded pedals give you responsive throttle modulation and brake progression for absolute control and precision, just like the real thing. Two additional pedals can be used as clutch and e-brake, or as pedal-free throttle and brakes. A rotation switch lets you easily toggle between simulation racing and arcade-style racing. Even the diameter of the wheel is calibrated to exact race car specifications. And an easy share button lets you save and share your best laps with a simple push. From the metal build to the suede wheel and steel pedals, every detail is dialed to give the entire system a high-end feel. Get better, go faster, win more, and enjoy every second of it. With RS30 Ultra, you'll race like a pro and feel like one too. RS30 Ultra by GTR Simulator. Go fast. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Tonight's showcase of Pedal the Metal Racing League Cup Series has been brought to you in part by our good friends and sponsors 
all around across the board and all around. We thank you so much for your support here on Season 5's Cup showing of the Pedal of the Metal Racing League Cup Series. A big thank you again from us, from you, to your friends and family. Thank you again. And now, onward to the show. And yes, indeed, race fans, onward to the show, indeed, live here at Kansas City, Kansas. We are back here at Kansas Speedway, and today it is time for Out of the Metal Racing League's Cup Series, presented in part by GTR Racing Simulator, right here on PT Racing TV. I got a run eye in the Crusader, Christian Shriver, and welcome back to the show. As always, we're settling in tonight for a major rush, rush of absolute madness and excitement as tonight. Ten drivers will lock and load down on the field and down on the track. With our starting driver being the number 20 of Jeffrey Oaks, the fastest qualifier just out of qualifying a minute ago. Robert Dudley will be the second spot on the 49. Right over two, it's going to be Corey Reed. And the 27 is outside the number three, Jason Henry. Row three, we'll see Brandon Bike. The 22 is outside the throttle Chantel bottle in the five. Row four, sees Matthew Hopper in the 84 is outside. It's the rattlesnake Robert Kahn, the 21. Row 5 sees Dennis Warren's on the 90, and then finally the 87, Kevin Baker. Baker not able to make the call at the moment. Drivers will lean him in for the charge off. They will do the parade lap and then fire him back down. Onward to formation, onward to the race here today. This is going to be a star-studded lineup here. Nine drivers making the call, being able to ready to fight it out here at Kansas with only five spots, getting anything to end this season out. The top five have been running hard all year round. They've been doing everything they can to give it their heart and their soul for you fans and you, for, and you people out there watching aboard. Now here on Pete Race TV, it's time to showcase... The absolute finest on the brightest as Pedal the Middle Racing League gets the Cup Series back in motion. All 750 horsepower roaring to life. Out of the gate here, it is going to be Dudleyville on the outside with Corey Reed now sneaking his way on into the inside zone. Drive him hard down into the back straight away. The number 27 looking to make the move off the run. Multiple angles and multiple ways to work around the track, but there's plenty of ways to also get loose around the track. Jeffrey Oaks with a major mistake there, and Corey, Corey Reed all over the place. Big wreck right behind all of them. Huge wreck there. Matthew Hopper and Jeffrey Oaks involved in that one. Holy smokes all over the place, and a major infestation of issues just calamity all over our screen here. Let's take a look at the PT Mr. Replay. I don't even know what the heck happened here other than this one just got a little carried away out of the gate here. We'll take a look at the replay here. This one is going to be kind of hard to judge for yourselves. My my opinion, I would thought. And Another look at it here. Corey Reed goes the inside here and looks like Oaksy got slightly loose off that. Got tagged by the 49. And then it was just all sorts of chaos afterwards. Yeah, really hard to really just kind of decipher it. Drivers are okay to return to action. They will bring them back into pit road and get cleaned up a little bit. But that was a little bit of a wild mess there, to say the least. Brad Thacker has joined us in right now as well. Just heads up, folks, it is his birthday today, so we'll give you a big shout-out and th happy birthday, my friend. Also, Arlie Dudley, good to have her back on board. Robert Dudley, always tuning on in as well. Great to hear from all you guys here today.
So our field looking to regroup, restructure here. Jeffrey Alex being told he's going to have to start from the back a little bit here because of that little troublesome spot there. It is early, though, so, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to work around. We saw Robert Cotton do that just a couple of weeks ago here, really making some moments here and make some moves when he absolutely had to. But Oxy, he does realize, I think he's got to get into pit road quicker rather than later because, honestly, he's still got to get out of pit road as soon as possible because the guys already are down and driving. Looks like he may take a full repair. Yep, he does. He takes a full repair job. And it looks like he's going to take all four sets of tires. I'm not sure I agree with that strategy there. Not because of anything really that would seem like a bad idea, but it's just to me it's a lot longer to get out of pit road. Although he'll definitely make a monkey out of me. He's getting out now as they are just now entering off of turn number two. And, and I'm not going to lie already. You should tell the auto bottle number five is damaged, bad, and already destroyed on the front end. We'll see if she can keep that D-Dub button box DTR simulator machine up to wrap at least and keep it under control for just a few laps here. But that damage on that front end is going to slow her down tremendously. Now, if we do not have a time limit tonight so the drivers can run their way out on the field, they still have to get 80 laps in no matter what. So we'll see how that plays out as the field stacks them back up and getting ready to go back on the attack here. The green flag charges up. Fresh tires for Oxy, and we'll see, and a fresh repair. We'll see if that helps him a little bit. Everyone else is going to have to try to hang on just for a couple more laps here. Charging them down. Three wide salute engaged. In through turn number one, down into turn number two. The Reynolds Snake, Robert Khan making a big V line for the front. He knows he's got to get away from these guys quickly here. Dennis Warren's getting slowed up a little bit in the 90, but seems to build up the speed and momentum and off the run. The 27 of Corey Reed going up top, trying to stay out of the way of Matthew Hoffert. Damage bad on the 27. He'll hopefully get it back fired up a little later on. Tony Westcott joins us in now. Dudleyville has just been pure insanity, pure unalterated horsepower. Just constantly, constantly, constantly dominating in these races. Consistency has just been his biggest strong suit. Today has been absolutely no different so far. Will that play out to the very end of this race? The 22 now bringing it down low. Says, hey, let's see where this one can go. Brings it up on the run here with Dudley on the outside. He's got him fed, booked in the middle. Dudley trying to make him fake around the outside. So far, so good. Not having any troubles keeping these cars, at least in one piece anyway. Jeffrey Oaks having to go back into pit road. I'm not really sure what went wrong there for Oaks, the other than maybe a black flag needing to be done off on him. Might have sped out of pit road and had to get pulled back over. If that is the case, that is a terrible situation for him and a tough break because now he's going to be a lap down in this case. Piling him off on the front straight over here. Robert Kahn now moving his way up towards the outside, looking for a runoff there on the quick, on the number 22 Benzoil shell machine of Brandon Bike. Look at Jason Henry moving the chains in the back straight away. He's got a run. He's got a seam trying to put the Chevrolet to good use. Dudley, though, is now taking charge of the race lead. He is going to be the new leader. If we get a good look at that camera angle here, don't worry. Dennis can't see our camera that we put in front of him. I bet sure that thing was small enough he wouldn't even notice that we had it in front of him there. But you can just see the eyes and the focus and determination he's got on his mind right now. Absolutely stoic. Not even thinking about what's going down or what's going to happen. He's just focused on trying to run this race into the ground. Bringing them back down across the front stretch right away here. Still some heavy artillery and heavy maneuvering here. Warren Young, I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, stage break. I do not know for sure. I asked real quick before we went in. They did not give me a full distinct answer. I think they may have been a little bit more focused on making sure the drivers were going to be okay to race tonight because the track is a little slippery out there, so I cannot say for sure what the stage break is going to be. If I had a guess, I would presume it would probably be about stage tw be lap 25, lap 30 is where my best guess is going to be. Side by side here for Brandon Pike with uh, no number to him, but he is the 22. Yeah, Westcott's saying, where is the number? Uh, 
Well, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure. With training paint, sometimes those numbers don't get quite put back in the way they're supposed to. And because I am running custom numbers on these guys, these sim stamps don't quite show up some, unless at the driver's end. So remember, that's on the driver's end at that point, not my end. I can't do anything about that. Speaking of doing nothing on his end here, the Rattlesnake Rubber Con, he's been pretty much having all sorts of troubles and all sorts of issues every time he comes out on the track. But today, it seems like he's been a maybe a little change up here. If you're trying to throw a few curveballs at these boys here, maybe make something work here tonight. He certainly has brought the pain and brought all the momentum towards his way at the, out of the gate, but it will last out the entire race because Brandon Pike in the number 22 has got a huge lead burrowing up on the field, and he is doing a great job hanging it down low and saying, let's see where this one goes. This is very reminiscent of what we saw just a couple of years ago with Harvick and that same car you see right in front of you with Brett, with Brett, when it was Joey Logano behind the wheel of it. It was that dirty air that that 550 package that completely just delayed and messed up everything on their end and on to the front. Warren Young one to see you know what happened to Oxy. Oxy, I believe, may have had a black flag penalty. He unfortunately had to go back into pit road. I'm not for sure what went wrong there other than when he crashed out for the first time, they did. he did have to end up getting cleaned up and get cleared out, but I don't know really what else happened after that, Ben. Kind of hard to say. It's speaking of kind of hard to say here. Watch out for the rattlesnake. Is there a time this guy doesn't literally find a way to just jam the throttle in? Seems like every time he comes out, he always has something to give and something to push with, and he's always on that go. Finds a way around Durant and Pike and makes a maneuver and makes it work. Position to the rattlesnake. And Pike said, I'm not dealing with that too easily here. I know your little tricks here are gone. I'm going back down in. He knows he's in a points race hunt here today. He needs to get things figured out and needs to get it figured out quickly as Robert Dudley looks on from behind. And really for Dudley right now, he just needs to show up to these next two races because today, no matter what, he'll have at least 11 points to his name. Actually 12 in this case because of Kevin Baker not showing up to get out on the track. So he's gonna pretty much be getting a lot of points and a lot of field days with this one. That's gonna help him for his overall circumstances and his situation, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna leave him out of the waters. He's gonna have to still try to make the best of his situation to make the best out of everything he does if he wants to burrow his way around and get some major momentum built up. Pike has lost a lot of ground here. May have overdrove his corners just a little too much even for himself. Con left high and dry and all alone, but look out for Jason Henry because on number three, he's got a race win to his name in due time. He had a, quite a few battles there with himself and the crew. He's looking to try to add on to that. Watch out for Dennis Warrens and Matthew Hoffer now, pulling their grip, pulling their weight back in, pulling their fight up to the ground. Con all alone though, that's really gonna make things a lot more difficult. Dennis Warrens moving the chains up into position here. Great running by him. The onboard camera here, though, Matthew Hoffer gives you guys just a brilliant idea of really how smooth he's got to keep on that steering wheel because this track, it will burn up tires quickly. It, it will burn up your end of the, back, of the spectrum if you're not careful. You've seen earlier where they wanted to get aggressive quickly and they wanted to get hard on the throttle quickly, but it's a slick kind of track, so you don't have necessarily all the momentum and grip right out of the gate. You're pretty much you're kind of used, you're kind of bound to staying either to the top or the low line until you get about a couple laps in on those fresh tires. Tires are everything here, and when they burn up, they will start to kind of burn into the track. Makes for a big difference and a half, I'll say. The Rattlesnake now in trouble here as Con has got the 49 of Dudleyville onto the bottom lane. Old Dudleyville in the Mercury 49 Super Toyota Camry right now looking to knock down the Ford Mustang of Remarcon once again. But those two have been pretty much at odds and at war with one another time and time again. Impressive to say at least just how hard they've been able to outrace and outrun each other and do whatever it is they need to do. I can tell you right now, one big thing that makes Khan so dangerous and so tough to beat is because of how well he can tune his setup, and he likes to tune it up to where it's a looser setup, 
And as the setup kind of burns in, he almost kind of fades it to be a lot faster than the short run because of his long run strategies he's possessed in, in previous times. You saw earlier with Pike, he actually had him beat on a short run, whereas that long run was going more towards Dudley. And now Khan is going to be tested even further with Dudley because Dudley is now on the inside making the run for him. Khan might have got a little too close to the wall there and lost all his grip there. Mal has to try to mount it back towards the middle, then the bottom. Dudley right on the bottom lane, though, making a side-by-side -side pass here, battling down to the front straightaway. It's a drag race between these two. Last winding down to the competition caution here before we start to get things on course. Oh! The rubber Khan spins it across it right out of turn one. Smack dab into the wall protection, and the 21 makes a huge mistake. Unlikely and unwritten. That was not something you would have expected out of the rattlesnake. But Robert, Dudley, but Robert Kahn and Dudley, they end up getting collided in, and both drivers take a big tumble and spin, unfortunately. What on earth happened here? Holy smokes. Watch this. Let's point this one back from point A to point B. Watch this from turn four. This is Dudley right here. He's making a great run on the 21. God's trying to stay in line, stay in pace. And this is the this is a mental error I feel like Khan did right here, trying to hold Dudley back. Wasn't paying too close attention to that wall protection. And just smack dabs him into the wall. Dudley tries to refire and regain center gravity. But my goodness, what an absolute hit. What an absolute hit, to say the least. We're going to go to the onboard camera here. This is what Khan was seeing when this happened. And again, this is what I hate to call it, but it's tunnel vision. This is literally when you just don't look ahead at the full extent of what you're up to. You get that slight mental error. You mental lapse it. Just get in the wall protection. You don't realize that had happened until it's too little too late. And then just get and just get smashed into there, and unfortunately, that's exactly what happened to the rattlesnake. Wow. Well, we've got more action to go here today, and more action here to tonight to finish out. Oaksy will definitely get himself a bit of a breather and a little bit of a time to rest. But can anyone else finish this one out? Find out when we return here on Pizza Racing TV. Looking for a new PC or an upgrade to your current one? Look no further than Ford Entertainment Group. Your home for the best quality and value in new, pre-built, and custom PCs at the lowest price guaranteed. We have affordable PC solutions for any budget, with custom builds starting at $595. Even the pros turn to Ford Entertainment Group to get them up and running. With valued customers from all over the world, it's easy to see why Ford Entertainment Group is the most trusted brand in custom PCs. I wanted to save my awesome subscribers the most money when they started their sim racing journey. Well, I searched high and low for the best deals. And I'm so proud that Jeffrey and I have partnered up so I can spread the good news about where to get the lowest price on a high-quality computer. Feel confident when buying from us with the FEG Satisfaction Guarantee. Get yourself on track today by visiting us online at FEGPC.net. Tonight's race, ladies and gentlemen, is also presented in part by our good friends over at GTR Racing Simulator. Welcome to the future, GTR Racing Simulator. It's not that we broke the mold, we just never used one. By d -Dub Button Boxes. Quality button boxes made your way. d -Dub Button Boxes always has you covered. By the Butt Kicker Company. Best of performance for, really for feeling on real tracks of the virtual world. The Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. By Gearhead Coffee. Whether you're wrenching on your vehicle at home, in the garage, or servicing customers at your for a pair facility or dealership, Garrett Coffee provides unique premium quality coffee that keeps your motor running. By Ooze Motorsports, don't think you, we are cheating because you think you're fast. By LPT Pallet, got a pallet not up to tip top shape? Call up EPT Pallet, we got you covered. By Ford Entertainment Group, PC.net, matching your want with your wallet, they'll always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. By Matt Mills Racing Team. Best of Xfinity teams out there sponsoring and supporting the Pedal the Metal Racing League this season. And if you want to help support Matt's journey, you follow him up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And check out his merchandise line on Facebook. Bye, man's maintenance. You want it done right? You call him, man. By Barrytown Cleaners. When you got yourself in a mess, Barrytown Cleaners can fix that up. 
And by Lightning Reps, most of Robo Designs Major Leisure, Paul's Reps will always bring out the best designs in your library. I think I said Paul's Reps by accident and Lightning Reps. They did change the name, folks, so my apologies. <laughs> Anyway, one thing we're not changing the game of, though, is the, the structure and storyline building up right now. Dudley has got damage on the front end of that car. And right at this moment, got a little bit of work to do here still before we hit our stage break. Fresh paint, go to paint, though, for number five, Chantel Pottle. And Jeffrey Oaks now back into this hunt as well. Still has to get a little bit more of a charge off because of that lap he lost as the Rattlesnake will be right into position. So now we'll build them back up. Everybody on lead lap. Everybody ready to dive this one down in again and just get this race hot on the crutches. Remember, Kevin Baker was supposed to have joined us here tonight. Unfortunately, mechanical problems and mechanical failures down from qualifying. Could not get him in. Yes, they are having two quick fixes here tonight, Westcott. They only get two. They cannot use any more. The only two they get, and that's it. Coming down the line. Ready for the green flag. Charge up and build them back up. Green flag is out. Hard on the run yet again here. Everyone flying by. Hitting them hard in the corners. Matthew Hoffert tags the wall slightly there out of turn one. Same spot we saw Khan just a minute ago. Hit it pretty good there. Watch out for Jason Henry as the number three Chevrolet is trying to manage his way up ahead and fight his way down to the corners. Brandon Pike even doing much of the same with Dennis Warren's on the outside line. Hard racing to be had here between these drivers. No one giving an inch off the start to the chicanes. Chantel Fonfall dealing with her old rival there and Corey Reed, the number 27, with a side-by-side -side battle between these two. With the chains down in here, Hoffer into the middle pack. Nice run there. Gets ahead of Dennis Warrens. Warrens makes a slight bobble into turn one and two. And again, the outside line got a lot of speed up there, but also a lot of risk and reward. Back on NASCAR Heat, I can tell you right now, that outside line was the only place you could get any risk and reward there. That was the only place you got some serious speed from. Here, though, it's the complete opposite. You can work the bottom line and the middle line, which, honestly, if you ask me, is a lot more fun than anything. On board here with Corey Reed right now as he tries to hammer down, keep himself mentally focused and straightened away. He knows Jeffrey Oaks is right behind him, looking to make a big move off him and make a big charge or two from that. It's a hard race and maneuvering here as they were off turn four. Dudley still holding back Jason Henry though, so it doesn't appear the damage too severe on his end. They may have already called the state's caution and called it good, so they may just want to be trying to race it out to the end now. Again, I do not know for sure the answer to that because I just not given the stage break report, so I do apologize in advance there, drivers and fans. Jeffrey Oaks now finding it down after that little bobble he suffered at the start. The number one qualifier looking to try to gain back into this. This is pretty much a story making itself fight its way from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom, back to the top. And speaking of fighting his way to the top here, once again, Dudley has got company here with Jason Henry right behind him. Henry is not one that will play too fair, will play too nicely if he has to. He will run hard, but he does not try to do anything too crazy and too outlandish. Doing a great job keeping himself at bay as a 5 cent up idol even doing much of the same. Corey Reed, though, way all over the place here. It's very similar to what we saw earlier when he had to fight it out there with Guffrey Oaks. Has to just got to watch the corners and watch those turns here. Can not let himself get too ramped up or too over the edge. The Jack Dow Motorsports 20 now leaning him in with the 27 right beside him. Smart thinking though up on the face of the of the construction number 27. Chevrolet Camaro of Corey Reed. Back in the bottom line. Stick to his will and stick to his pattern. Oh! And Deja Vu once again. Jeffrey Oaks gets another piece of him.
Even Khan got struck in that one again, and that damages him up a little bit. Oh, my. Wow. Kansas Speedway right now is not treating anybody nice, much less fairly. That is for certain. No look at it. Looks like Oxy just slammed the wall and ended up taking everybody with him. We'll have one last look at this one from another angle. This one looked like it was Oxy again, but this time it was the wall protection rather than just spinning himself out. Got a full look of that one. Got Reed and Reed ended up getting con and everybody else got kind of caught off in the between. Talk about a hard lick and a half there for these drivers and just an absolute barn burner bad break. Wow. Nearly halfway done with this one and so far I don't even know if any of these guys are going to be able to finish with a clean slate on their cars. Remember they only got two instant repairs so it's not exactly like they could just keep doing that all the time. Well. Yeah, what's even funnier too, folks, looking at our caution tracker, we've had intervals in the twos. Lap two, lap 22, and now lap 32 was our caution tracker. I'm not trying to say that there's some kind of conspiracy going around, but it seems like the number two has something against us tonight. So I had to uh, bring these cars somewhat back, settle down, kind of under control again. And once more, hard racing to be had, really getting the better of some of these drivers and some of the best here. Robert Kahn, he's going to have a long night ahead of him. This is the first time I've surely seen him at a disadvantage, a disarray because of this unfortunate mistakes. And really, he, he's already wrecked out one time, so he's only got one instant repair left. He uses that up too quickly. This could cost him here. Double file them up. Next time by, we go ring, ring green flag racing again. Warrens will be your new leader with Dudleyville on the outside. And then it will be the three of Jason Henry and then the 22 of Brandon Pike in that mix. Corey Reed and Chantel Throttle Bottle both representing their fellow na their nation of the Canadian region, mostly up in the rock portion of Newfoundland. I got asked the other day, wait a minute, does Newfoundland actually have a racetrack or any series, anything going on like NASCAR related? Matter of fact, I had to remind him, yes, they actually do. You can believe it, they got the uh, NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Series for the weekly super late models division and late model division over at Eastbound Park, if you can believe that. Pretty cool little track I've seen actually too. Can't wait to go visit it one day, but as we get back to the green flag action here. We're going to take another look at the race in action here and see about more racing, more hats, times to be had. Can't wait to see all the news content they bring out here on iRacing, by the way. It's still like a lot of tracks I see on here I want to still go visit. More on that later on in due time, but there's definitely a few on here we still got to get on the list here. But right now, we still have to get through this race and get through its entirety. Our last race of the night and this main event challenge right now for these drivers is pretty much all about just trying to survive and conquer. Dudleyville once again has the race lead. Hunt Henry trying to stay away from getting into problematic zones, though, with the 22 of Brandon Pike. The 5 of Chantel Bottle going up high, deep inside, trying to get something to work. She's had a rough season, to say the least, currently. A bit of a bad break for her in 7th in points. Robert Kahn had a just pretty much a bad night so far. And again, he's only got one instant repair left, if, if that. Oaksy, same thing. He's used off all two of his repairs. So now he's going to have to be very, very cautious on what he does from there. He's pretty much put himself into a bit of a dark spot, a bad omen, if you will. 
Look at 22 there. Brandon Pike now swinging his way on the inside, making a big run off the corners. Trying to take down the number 27 of Corey Reed. Reed, though, managing to make his target, make his presence felt. He hangs on to the outside line, trying to get there to Dudley. And Dudleyville is the one that holds the keys to the gate uh, to the gates of victory. He's the gatekeeper. But again, his championship reign may be pretty much all but set in stone and sealed away. No matter what any of these drivers do, unless he doesn't show up to the next two races, there's no way to knock him off his podium. I'm back around right now here top five look like this it looks like Robert Dudley Brandon Pike Corey Reed Chantel Paul and Jason Henry and I'm not sure what the heck happened to Matthew Hoffer down there but he is now gone and out I'm not sure what happened here in the nine is the ninth place driver of the 8-4 Matthew Hoffer it's gone I don't know what the heck Kansas has done to these drivers or done to this track but It has completely mesmerized things up here. We're trying to get word right now down to talk with Hoffer and see if he can give us an inside scoop on what's going on down there, but we don't have any any race reports there to kind of help out with this. Trying to hopefully listen in later, but I don't know, man. This could be a bit of a long night for some of you guys. Hoffer is stuck in pit road, and I don't know when he'll be able to get out. He's saying right now he's trying to get out. He's trying to hurry up. He's going to try to hurry up. Here comes the five. Shunt up on hurry and back into the front. This is the first time we've truly seen her into the fold and really put on a fight here tonight. Dudleyville knows what she's capable of. She's been out of his game and at his level for quite some time. You can get, you can take anybody's guess here who gets the advantage on this one. On board here with Brandon Pike, though, number 22, as he continues to hang on to the top three podium slot. So calm, cool, and collective, not worrying about anything other than just the focus of the run in front of him. Speaking of the run in front of him there, here's Corey Reed, the 27. You can see the run he's getting as well, trying to draft off Dudley, trying to get a little of that speed from the five of Chantel model. Pike actually getting more of the five, though than anything else, so it's really Dudley. He's trying to use that aerodynamics off of and trying to build the draft line into. At least a mile and a half, so you kind of have to do that ride. Right? You have to kind of go that speed and distance. And these cup cars are extremely hard to really push and master at their limit because again, at their core, these things are just heavy pieces of equipment. Over two tons of machinery, you're just trying to wheel around with a steering wheel that's really not even bigger than your car, actually while also feeling the absolute forces, the G's, and everything that comes with it. It is a apps, it is amazingly just crazy to how much you will do what you were pushed to your fullest on. And speaking of pushing limits, we will see some limits pushed tomorrow night. I'm not going to spoil anything, but let's just say what you see here is what you're going to get. And I've already tried the car out on the track, and let me tell you, I thought Nürburgring was crazy, and I think I might... I think we might get outdone by something a little bit more weird, but still at the same time, pretty pretty interesting to see. Driver spaced out a little bit here. Jeffrey Oaks now starting to space his way back in this. Probably taking a lot easier and a lot more under pressure and under cool because he knows right now he's damaged up a lot of equipment in that 20, unfortunately. He got just too loose and too out off the shots here on some of these corners and just could not get to restructure. But now, it's the complete opposite. He's, he's kind of leaning back in towards the run and back in towards the field. While Dennis Warren's kind of warranting himself to a little bit less of a speed gap, a little bit more distance. Maybe trying to save his tires and his fuel because he knows that fuel run and that strategy that these guys can bring on him. 
fuel and tire strategies are extremely crucial here and they can be the biggest saving grace or your biggest downfall depending on how you look at it. Maybe right now it looks like tires may be starting to fade off for the five of Shinto Fala. Look at the eyes and the focus on her mind. Not worrying about anything other than just staying dead heap in the center of the car and keeping everything on her. I talked to her earlier today and she said point blank that when she's on these big tracks, she said her biggest issue has always been trying to look in the rear view mirror and it just messes up her line. She said if she can stay focused on just the line and not worry about everyone else, this wouldn't be a problem. She'd be much better of a driver in her mind. If you're wondering what mirror, mirror driving is, it's when you're literally looking out to your top of your mirror there. Look at you get a little onboard camera here with Corey Reed. Look to the top right of your screen. You see that mirror placement there in that left side there of that mirror? You're pretty much watching those mirrors constantly rather than actually staying more focused on that track line in that position and really keeping a closer eye out on things as you progress through. And speaking of progressing through, Corey Reed now has progressing up to second place with the 5 cent final kind of put in the same predicament that we saw Oxy and Khan in earlier on. Khan earlier ended up smack dab and took out Dudley, although we thought Dudley actually managed to escape with pretty much the luckiest break I think I've seen a car have to get hit like that spot in and work his way around again. Talk about battling it out though here, the Canadian driver is battling quick and battling fast here. Great side by side momentum from both ends of the camp. Matthew Hopper getting back out on the track, but he's, uh, let's just say he lost a lot of laps, unfortunately, due to un very, very unfortunate circumstances. The A4 is damaged up slightly on the right side there. You can see a little bit of a bent in on the right corner there. It is a little bit more structed, so he's going to really have to keep himself a little bit less speed-wise and use more of the control from the aerodynamics of the car. That's the last thing anybody wants to hear when you're on a track like this is you're stricken with you're stricken with speed because of damage. Damage is extremely hard to break off and really hard to kind of get away from whenever you're coming out on the track or you're coming out to race. Jason Henry now the number three machine pushing the Chevy Chevrolet up in the fight zone here looking for a runoff. Looking to grab the five's attention maybe make her think about that mirror driving a little bit more. Moving down to the inside zone. Once you're in that rear view mirror, man, it's it's a dangerous thought. It's a dangerous sight. I do it all the time, honestly, when I'm on the dirt or I'm on a short track. I'll look up when I shouldn't be. I should be focusing on the road. But, I mean, there are times you kind of have to, though. Especially on dirt, by the way. That's when you have to worry about guys sliding into you or throwing sliders around here. Which, by the way, we are at Kansas. And I did remind the folks that you can't throw sliders here. And it looked like Henry was trying to get a runoff there on the five to throw one at her. Didn't quite stick. Look like maybe not enough speed kind of going in that corner, but we've seen it before where you can throw a huge slider and time it just right. You can pretty much drive it in low and then send it up to the top side to the heavens above. It does work. I've tried it. But it's also extremely, extremely dangerous for a multitude of reasons. Because if you miss takes it just one little time, you end up either taking yourself out or you take one of the drivers out with you. But it appears this was pretty much a more under control, under control, under appreciative kind of run here from Henry to make his way around Chantel to throw the paddle. And Chantel not able to quite keep him back down. As he'll fight it out there with her, Corey Reed starting to distance herself, trying to distance himself from her and him. And Robert Dudley, well, he's just, well, he's doing Dudley things. Let's just say that. 5-5 down remains to 24. 
Dudleyville caught a huge break earlier with that little re that little avoidance of the car of the wreck there. Got the car fixed up and got it cleaned back out for a race here. Jeffrey Oaks having to go back into pit road. He'll have to get some fuel and some tires. So now pit strategy is going to be full effect. Damage is still high on Khan. You can tell he's going to try to last this thing out as long as he can. He does not want to give in. I mean, I'll be honest with you, in many ways, I don't disagree with what Khan's trying to do or what Oaks he was trying to do, but I mean, if I'm looking at beyond the barrier here, what Khan's right now is pushing is really his car and his limits. I mean, if he can go the full distance and get a full tank and get a full tire set and fuel and then a clean up on his car, yeah, that might be able to work out all right for him and maybe be able to get him something going, but I just don't see it playing out and structuring as well as maybe others would. Bike is, slow, bike is going to slow up, let him by, break it in, break it in, and he'll get it sell back down. Jason Henry now starting to social distance a little bit here around and get up ahead of the fire center bottle here. We're on the onboard camera here with Jason Henry. And he's going to slow it down too as well here. So he's going to opt into pit road. Corey Reed will do much the same. Dudleyville and the throttle Chantel bottle will stay out. Don going to go the full distance here. He's really going to use up every single part of that 21, isn't he? And now the 21 is going to admit defeat and admit it's time to go in as well. He will finally put him in there. So he ends up going into pit road and everybody's pretty much going to get put a lap or two down. Depending on where you're at position wise. By the 49 or the 5. So now the drivers are going to have to really look very, very carefully on how hard they're going to run this one down in Dudleyville. Opting to go in quickly here. Ops to strategize and ops to figure this one out. So Dudley gonna go in, but the five stays out. I think she wants to go a full lap ahead of Dudley, and I think that's what her game plan is. She knows she's got this lead and she's got a chance. But I think really her momentum is exactly what she's gonna try to do here, which is the short run. Or I don't know. Maybe she might go very, very far in this one. I I don't know. I don't usually would try to suggest going to go in this many flaps, laps around and pace around like this, honestly. Even though it's the first time she's going to lap the entire field. Problem is, Dudley is pretty much going to be in a solid position to kind of take over if it comes down to it. Actually, speaking of taking over, Jeffrey Oaks taking over position from Dudley here for second and even Corey Reed now intervening so now Dudley's gonna have to find a way around two drivers as the five Chantel Otto will finally admit that she needs to get in there as well so she shows her hand and everyone has now headed into pet road for a one time tonight at least whoa oopsie love tap to the wall protects there but if he can somehow walk away with this W and put off a very big win this would certainly Add a lot of credibility to his name and a lot of victory stance to him. He's nearly got a full... He's got a really a good position or two off these guys. He's got a full second and a half ahead of Reed and Dudley. Dudley is starting to close them off though and Reed is doing much of the same. I think Oaks he was trying to play out a very specific strategy and I honestly do like it a little bit. Chantel is going to get back out of pit road here. She may be able to catch the top five, but it's going to be extremely difficult to get into that podium top three. Considering where her distance is and where her position is at, honestly, I probably would have gone in one lap before that and then maybe try to work the strategy in because once these drivers build up speed and build up momentum, it just completely derails everything on the track.
Now again, I'm not behind. I'm not behind the car, and I'm not one of those folks that want to try to like try to see how it is. But honestly, if I'm looking at multiple angles and multiple ways, that's kind of how I would have played it out. All depends on how you look at it, though, folks. There's a lot of ways you can race them in. There's a lot of ways you can bring it all the way to the end. Every driver is different on how they perceive it. Hey, look at Reed now. Going to take it overall. Look out. Oh, very good. Look at this. Dudley in between. Three wide salute for the race lead. That is going to be one of the closest clinches you'll ever see. Dudley making a big move. Reed trying to hold on. Hold on. Oh, my. Dudley just completely sideswiped two for the price of one. Brought it right in on the corner. And I was not expecting that at all. Was watching her camera angle here, and Dudley just kind of creeped in on the low low and just got him going solo. Reed and Oxy now are trying to find some little edge or a little advantage, maybe to build back out of Dudley, but Dudley has kind of took this one away. And a later pit stop has pretty much played into the exact same strategy he was hoping for and he wanted to see. 13 laps remain. This is bad. Bad if you're any of the guys right in the back here. Jason Henry knows he's kind of in a troublematic zone. Spike and Pottle, much of the same. Brandon Pike right now trying to maybe get something going from earlier. He had a great short run. Actually managed to hold off some tough competition there and some tough hombres. But from there, it was pretty much kind of sink or swim. And unfortunately for him, he kind of, swung, he kind of sunk deep in. Dennis Lawrence right now got his lap back here from the Rattlesnake. Robert Kahn downside is for Kahn though. He is currently trying to push as hard as he can. Keep on that lead lap. That damage on that car has really affected him and really pushed himself to a full limit. I think he may have used up all his extra repairs before he came back out from the last from the last caution he had. And man, if that is the case, then oh boy, that is an absolute tough, tough break to have to struggle with and have to fight with. Firing him off to the end right now. Dudley currently holding a good half a second plus lead over Corey Reed. Reed is trying to get him in the corners and trying to get him on the stretches, but it's very difficult here. But look at Reed, actually. He's starting to get a little bit of ground here. Look at that. I might have to take it back here. Oh, looks like Dudley, though, managed to build up a lot of more momentum on the corner there. He really jumped the gun there. I think Reed was trying to play possum and then actually get a speed boost on him, but I don't think Dudley was not paying attention to that. He was paying close attention to it. He had him very much set and focused, and he knew what he wanted to do. That's extreme smart driving on the face of the 49. It's going to boil down to a last gap, last minute position here for these drivers. Jeffrey Oaks, the number 20 right now, trying, desperately trying to hold on, trying to do whatever he can. But there is only going to be eight laps remaining. And Dudley holding the moment. You can say he's playing a little toto because he's holding the line. It's pretty much been the it's been two seasons straight of Dudley. He's been he might be the only guy in all honesty that has ever done a back-to-back -back season in quite some time. We saw Khan do it a couple of seasons ago where he actually went back to back in two straight seasons. Since we don't run the Super League model division at least lively here anymore. It's pretty much been just nothing but the mainstream race of the cup, the Xfinity or Trucks. These drivers will have a lot of tough decisions to make, though, a lot of stuff to figure out for next season. 
Because come next season, I almost guarantee you, there will be bigger and better things coming. A little, little more crazy action in between. A lot more hard racing to be bad. Still cannot wait for it to come up. But, of course, Season 3 still has all but a few races left. And throughout these moments and throughout these events, one thing has always remained the same. And that is who can outdo and outrun the best and the brightest. That was what we was all about here at Battle of the Middle Racing League. It's just having a good, clean, far-fought battle, but keeping it real and keeping it family, as always. Five laps left to go. Reed is just way too far behind Dudleyville. Dudley has pretty much locked it up. He punched his ticket really to the big dance and the big victories throughout the season, throughout these events. Having solid performance after performance after performance. Never giving out, never giving hope, never giving up hope for what he really wanted to see. Firing him down to the very edge, the very plane of existence. It's almost done and over with. Three to go. Now leading in with only two laps to go on the next time by. Got to give credit where credit's due to Jeffrey Oaks in that 20, man. That Jack Dell Motorsports crew literally fought hard and fought well to get up to the top spot back into the podium after two major incidences and issues. Percentile throttle ball, definitely a strong showing from her now, taking a shot at Brandon Pike. Pike, give him credit for though for earlier, commanding to hold back Khan. What an extremely good short run momentum burst of speed. It shows he's got something under the hood, and he certainly has something that can be used for the long term. Jason Henry, obviously, with a win this season, he's been pretty much rock solid. Whenever he comes out on the track and whenever he comes out to race, and that has definitely been point taken for Corey Reed. I think he was just hoping for a little bit of a break or a little bit of something to kind of keep his mojo going. But for tonight, anyway, for Reed, a top three finish will have to kind of come in order as long as he can finish these last four corners up because Robert Dud Dud Dudleyville Dudley. Is putting a Mercury 49 Toyota Camry. And of course, always in loving memory of Benny Dudley. Into victory lane. Solid as can be. It's solid as proof. Dudley wins again at Kansas. Second to Ray, third to Oxy. What a race and what a day for all drivers involved. Seems like he just cannot be outdone or outtouched or outraced on certain occasions, certain limits. And we think this race really pinpoints that better than anything. Into the grassy plains. Yeah, he can do that now. It's all up to him. <laughs> He'll have a little fun with that one. Take a look at our race results presented in part by GTR Racing Simulator now on your screen. Dudleyville with the win. Second to Corey Reed. Third to Jeffrey Oaks. Fourth to Jason Henry. Fifth to Chantel Fottle. Sixth to Brandon Pike. Seventh to Robert Kahn. Eighth to Dennis Warren. Tonight to Matthew Offert. Tenth to Kevin Baker. Rounding out top ten here tonight. Kevin Baker did not make the cut. Take it down now. Talk with our drivers here and have a little listen in here. Going to be interesting to hear what they say and what they've got on their plate here. It's quite a bit of a wild ride, to say the least, here tonight. But it's all thanks in part by our good friends over at GTR Racing Simulator. Welcome to the future, GTR Racing Simulator. It's not that we broke the mold, we just never used one. By D Dub Button Boxes, quality button boxes made your way. Button boxes always has you covered. By the Butt Kicker Company, best informers for real tracks of the virtual world. The Butt Kicker, feel what you've been missing. By Gearhead Coffee. 
Whether you're renting on your vehicle at home, servicing customers at the work at the automotive repair facility or dealership, Gatorhead Coffee provides a unique premium quality coffee that keeps your motor running. By Ooze Motorsports, don't think we're cheating because you think you're fast. By LPT Pallet, got a pallet not up to top shape? Call us up, we'll get you covered. By former entertainment group PC.net, matching your want with your wallet. They always work with your needs to build the best PC at the right price. By Matt Mills Racing Team, best in the Xfinity teams out there sponsoring and supporting Battle of Bell Racing this season. If you have a sport match journey, follow them up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. By Man's Maintenance, you want it done right? You call them, man. By Barry Town Cleaners, whether you are whether you got yourself a mess or are on the go with a little bit of a cleanup job needing to be done, Barry Town Cleaners always got you covered. And by Lightning Wraps, most affordable designs made at leisure, Lightning Wraps will always bring out the best designs in your library. And speaking of libraries, it's time to hit them on down. Talk with our top three here tonight. Race fans, your race winner here tonight, Kansas, Robert Dudleyville Dudley. Robert, congratulations on this victory once again. A really solid night for you and your crew. Hey, thank you, Chris. Long time no talk. Yeah, good run tonight. Certainly was indeed, and really put up a good shot. Good shot here, man. You definitely did everything you could to hang in there, and looked like the last pitch strategy certainly worked out perfectly. Yeah, I figured if we'd have that long green, and then halfway through the run, which was probably about lap 22, lap 20. Yeah, it's about when the tires started. You started losing one or two tenths per lap, so I mean, when I planned on doing it. For sure there, and at the end of the day, obviously, he pulled off a great run and a great burst of speed for the night tonight. So who do you want to thank you for this finish? I'd like to thank you, always, for putting on a good broadcast like you. Uh, PTM Racing League, all the admins, Chan, Matthew, Robert, all the great sponsors we got. Uh, GTR Simulator, Butt Kicker, FEG, Gearhead, Powders Wraps, Mans, LD Pallet, Barrytown Cleaners, uh, Sorry if I forgot anybody. That's off the top of my head. And I'd like to thank all the racers in here and Jeffrey Oaks and all the, putting up a great battle tonight. Good bounce back. I'd like to thank my wife for letting me do this. My dad, Arliss, for cheering me on and supporting me. And my son, Tyler. And ALS Association, Alabama chapter. We put this banner on my car. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, Dudleyville, congratulations, man. What a night it has been. Great race and really a finish the season to the coming up for you. Thank you, bud. You take care, Chris. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Dud -Dud Dudleyville Dudley, your winner here tonight. But your second place driver, Corey Reed, definitely put on a great show to the, say the least to the very end. Reed just came up a little short, though, coming off the line there. That three wide salute cost you and, and Oaks and Oaksy a little chance to win. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Robert had a fast car as usual. But, uh, I burned up my tires a bit early there before the pits up. I thought I might have gotten that after that pit stop. I got a little jump on, but so he was bad fast as always. He certainly was tough to beat and had a lot of great speed to it. But, man, you still put up a great showing for yourself and to the end. So I got to ask you, if you could have done anything a little differently, would you have tried to really perform anything a little different? I don't know. I, probably, uh, I was probably pushing too hard early. Trying to trying to keep up, I guess. But I should have backed off a little more, stayed my tires a little more, I believe. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, though, uh, obviously, Reed coming up home with a second-place finish here tonight. Pretty solid performance. Is there anybody you want to thank you for that? I want to thank all you guys for putting it off and all the racers for having good, clean races. And hopefully, we'll get more now in the next season. And thank everybody who's watching at home and all the fans. And for sure there. Well, nevertheless, Reed, appreciate you coming on board here tonight, sir. Congratulations on a second-place finish. We certainly hope to see you very, very soon, sir. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Corey Reed, your second-place finish here tonight. Big shout-out to Jeffrey Oaks as well. Big solid third-place finish for him and his crew. I don't believe he will be joining us here tonight, maybe just trying to kind of settle down from all the hard racing he had earlier on. But certainly a great showing from him and the crew, and a big thank you to all the fans and people that come on board here tonight. From all of us here at p 3 TV, thank you so much for tuning on in. As always, we will see you guys again when the green flag is flying high next time here on p 3 TV. But for now, please be safe. God bless. Take care of yourselves. I will see you very, very, very soon.